We've seen how to create character settings and story trees. In this video, we'll see how to create a scene. I add a scene and open it. Here is the scene editor. In the center, we see a representation of the scene. At the bottom, we have the timeline with the different stages of the scene. And on the right, we have all the components that can be used to compose a scene. Characters, text, choices, sound, and images. By default, the scene contains only one component, the background. I select it and choose a background from all the backgrounds created for this project. The scene has a background. Now, I'll add a character. I click on the character button and a character appears. I select it. We can change his appearance and we can also change the facial expression among all those created for this character. The character can also be moved, oriented, or stretched. By default, the interface hides a character's properties, but it is possible to display them. This lets you manually change the character's properties, position, scale, rotation. You can also adjust its lighting to match the background. It is possible to trigger a character entry or exit animation. I'll add another character and set it up. I choose his facial expression, position him and adapt him to the scene. I can continue by adding more characters. All objects displayed in a scene can be deleted by pressing the trash button. Visual novels are stories, so they have text. I'll add a dialog box. A panel appears and I can move it around. I can adjust it and orient it. If I make a mistake, I can reset it by pressing the button with the magic wand. The dialog box is ready. Now, I'm going to add some text. You can write directly on the panel or on the interface on the right. If you wish, you can link a panel to a character. To do so, click on the character field. Select the character you wish to link to the dialog. In the timeline, we see that we're on stage zero of the scene. I'm going to add a new stage to the scene. We switch to a new stage. I add a new text. I associate the other character and modify facial expressions. I've modified one character and now I'm modifying the other. I've completed this step. I can add a third step to the scene. The conversation between the two characters continues. I associate the text with the other character and change their facial expressions again. To change the stage of the scene, I use the timeline slider. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll consider stage 2 to be the last stage of the scene and add a transition animation for each character. You can trigger an audio file at any stage of a scene. I'll add an audio component. By default, it's empty. So I double click to open the audio assets panel. You can change the volume by moving the cursor in the audio field. And if you want to delete the component, just press the trash icon. We've finished this first version of the scene. If you look at the block, you can see an entry point and an exit point, but it's also possible to create scenes with several exits. That's what we'll see now. I add images to my scene. I chose a graphic asset. I confirm. What's special about this component is that it has a property that makes it clickable. A clickable element is always linked to a scene output, so if the player doesn't click on it, he can't leave the scene. I add a second graphic element. Activated the clickable property, and we can see that it's linked to the second output. If I check the block, we see that our scene has two outputs. This is the first possibility but there's another way to create a scene with multiple outputs. I flip on the last stage of the scene and I delete the two graphic elements. 
I'm going to add one last step to the scene. I delete the dialog box as it's no longer required. Now I'll use the multiple choice text component. The component appears. You can move it, adjust it, delete or add choices. I add text. Each line will direct the player to a stage output. I can add a new choice. On the right in the form, you can see that each choice is linked with an output. I save. And if I go back to the story tree, I see that there are three outputs. You can delete a choice by clicking on its trash icon. It's also possible to continue the scene after a multiple choice text. If I click on the output field, I can choose to continue the scene or exit. We've completed all the timeline steps. Now it's time to configure the scene. A scene can have an entry animation, an exit animation, and it's possible to add music to it. I choose one from the default list. I confirm. A second audio track can be used for background music. As with graphic assets, you can import your own audio files. The scene is finished and I'm ready to test it. I save and launch the scene. Now you know how to create a visual novel scene. I didn't say it, but the dialog box design is totally customizable. But that's the subject of another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time.